Hello friends, welcome back to Endo Tales from Life. In this short Ed Crisp video, we are going to discuss about C-shape root canal system. Yes, this is a very interesting anatomical variation that is especially seen in mandibular second molars. And people practicing in this part of the world need to be aware of this especially because this type of variation is especially common in the Asian population and also in the Indian population. So, what is a C-shaped canal? So, basically for you to understand, let me keep it very simple. When the, when the mesial and the distal root of a mandibular second molar completely fuses, it becomes a single root and we get a single large canal. This is also common in mandibular second molars. We do see cases with just a single root and a single canal just like an anterior tooth. But in some situation, what happens is there is an incomplete fusion of the mesial and the distal root which results in what is seen like a C-shaped ribbon type extension of the canal which is a communication between the mesial and the distal canals. So, what is interesting about the C-shaped canal is that when you see them on the radiograph, you will actually see that there are two separate roots and you will actually see a delineation between the two. But what is interesting is in the clinical uh, uh, examination, you will see that there is a communication between the mesial and distal. And in fact, you can even run a file from the mesial to distal without taking it out of the orifice. So it will be interesting for people to understand how is this possible. When I see on a radiograph, I can see two separate roots. And when I see it clinically, there is a communication. So for you to understand the C-shape anatomy better, let me show you a small video in an extracted tooth. So this is one of a, a common type of C-shape canal where you see a communication between the mesial and distal. So this is the reason why on a radiograph, the roots are seen separately. Most often, the communication happens on the buccal side. The fusion happens on the buccal side. So the distal buccal to the mesial buccal, there is a communication. And the lingual roots are generally separated. So we all know that anything that is towards the lingual, that anything that is close to the X-ray sensor is what is seen prominently. So since the lingual roots, which are actually separated, uh, are closer to the uh, radiograph, uh, I mean your x-ray film or sensor, that is why in your radiographs you see the two roots separately. But there is always a communication on the buccal side. So even if you see two roots separately, you need to be prepared for a C-shaped communication. So C-shaped canals are common. Uh, we would have always seen this type of complete fusion of the mesial to the distal canal. But what we are going to discuss today is uh, another interesting type of C-shaped canal. So C-shaped canals can be classified into different ways. There are two to three different popular classifications with uh, say three to five types of canal representation. But uh, let me not confuse you people. Let us just talk about what are the two most common types of C. So basically when there is a complete C, that is uh, the fusion of the mesial buccal to the distal buccal uh, with a separation on the lingual side alone that is called as the type 1. Whereas in this category or the type 2 that we are going to discuss today, you see a semicolon type C-shaped canal. Yes, there is a distinct mesiolingual canal and after that you have a communication from the distal to the mesial buccal. So this is um, uh, the c shape commun communication can also happen at different levels from the coronal to the apical part. So this particular case that we are going to discuss today, we can see that there is a separate mesiobuccal and there is a fusion of the mesio, I mean there is a separate mesiolingual and there is a fusion of the distobuccal to the mesiobuccal. So this particular patient was referred to me, the referring dentist, after accessing, he found that there is some variation, he was not able to understand the anatomy and he referred it to me. 
as you can see on the preoperative radiograph there were two separate teeth so two separate roots that were delineated but when he saw clinically he saw some communication so he referred it to me and for you to understand i labeled it here so we see a separate mesiolingual canal and apart from that the distolingual to the mesiobuccal there is a c so this is a typical semicolon type of a c-shaped representation so i instrumented all the canals considering uh, whenever there is a ribbon shape communication we consider as if there are three to four canals so that we try to instrument our, our instrument contacts as much of the tooth structure possible the root canal possible so here i considered it as fusion of four canals and try to instrument all of them and still we know that the rotary instrument would have not touched most of those canal spaces the isthmus is the communications areas so the main instrumentation is just done in the uh, main canals that you have located and working length and master cones were verified but the principal obturation and uh, cleaning methods that are employed here is going to play a huge role so many people when they instrument these kind of cases due to the large volume of pulp tissue present and there is a continuous bleeding and also the pulp chamber can sometimes be little deeper so people think that they might have even perforated as there is a lot of bleeding that is happening so the key here is ultrasonic or sonic irrigation which is going to clean those isthmuses and communications following which we need to go for either a thermoplastic type of obturation or the bioceramic obturation so uh, uh, in one of my previous videos I have discussed about how bioceramic technique is just a single cone technique but still can fill a lot of these isthmus spaces. So here in this particular scenario I have employed the same ultrasonic irrigation following which I have injected the bioceramic sealer and when I was doing this case I when I was injecting the bioceramic sealer into the distobuckle area I saw the entire sea uh, getting filled except for the mesiolingual which confirmed that this is a semicolon type canal where the mesiolingual was completely independent and did not have any communication with the sea that is running from the mesiobuckle to the distobuckle so the bioceramic sealer was placed and master cone was placed and sealed and condensed with the uh, hydraulic single cone technique and as usual I immediately sealed the pulp chamber orifice after the application of flowable uh, after application of universal bonding agent and then a flowable composite and the patient was referred to the referring dentist and this is the final obturation and you can see that there is a separate independent mesolingual canal and apart from that there is a lot of communication and all those spaces have been filled with the combination of the bioceramic GP and the bioceramic sealer and when we take a closer look at it you can see the amount of ramifications that are present in these cases and how we have successfully managed this so the key in this case is irrigation with ultrasonic or sonic following either a thermoplastic technique if you are using the traditional sealers or when you use a bioceramic technique or uh, where you inject the sealer inside the root canal passively and then a single cone obturation with hydraulic single cone technique. So the take home message is that the C-shaped canal need not be only a complete C. We also have a category called as semicolon representation of a C-shaped canal. So these two types of C-shaped canal anatomies are very common in mandibular second molars and the clinician need to be aware of it. So I hope this video was useful and we have more educational content in our social media platforms. Thank you for watching and we'll be coming up with more videos in the coming days.